ladies and gentlemen. It is Friday, the 14th day of July. The year is 2017. And if you can hear the sound of my voice, you are the revolution. I am revolutionary warrior number one, general of the Save the World Army, smoking Joe McHale. And I would like to welcome you to day 306 of Operation Save the World. We are live from beautiful Sydney, Australia. And this is the Save the World Army live daily news Smashing through the lies of the Illuminati, smashing through the lies of the New World Order, and smashing through the lies of the government who are escalating their attacks against humanity every single day. But even though they are escalating their attacks against us, my brothers and sisters, don't you dare be sour. Join the Save the World Army and feel the power. Yes, 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 I have the power, you have the power, we have the power, humanity has the power, and we have to use that power, the power of love, to beat the Illuminati, to break the new world order, to bring down the world government, and to save the world. Because we know that the only way for humanity to be free is for us to bring down the government that is enslaving us. Thank you all so much for joining me on this beautiful July afternoon. Trent has memes. Thank you for tuning in. Revolutionary Corporal 366, Ghost Who Walks. Thank you for tuning in. Good to see you, Trent. Revolutionary Corporal Mama Spike, Revolutionary Corporal 150, and Laurel 3311, thank you for tuning in. Good afternoon to you, Ghost Who Walks. G'day, Pebbly Creek and Revolutionary Warrior 26, the Duchess. Thank you for tuning in. Mama Spike says, hello all. Ghost Who Walks says, good afternoon, my fellow warriors. Laurel says, hey brother, it's been a while. Sorry, life has been crazy. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. It's good to see you. Spartacus, Revolutionary Sergeant 176, thank you. For tuning in, Ghost Who Walks says, we can't be beaten. You're exactly right, my brother. Resistance is victory, and we are beating the Illuminati, breaking the new world order, bringing down the world government, and saving the world from evil right here, right now. Spartacus says, hey, brother, how you going? I support net neutrality. I have to look more into it, but uh, I'm not sure how I feel on the net neutrality issue. And Laurel says... Revolutionary Warrior 133, checking in, truth will win. That's awesome. Let me check my spreadsheet here and I will update your Instagram handle. Thank you all so much for joining me. Of course, I've been Ben from Facebook. They're doing their best to stop the truth, to suppress and oppress and silence the people who speak the truth, but I will not be suppressed I will not be oppressed. I will not be silenced. I will continue to speak the truth until my dying breath. And I appreciate and I thank you all for your courage in spreading the truth every single day. Our first article today from neonnettle.com. Pedophile priest who raped 200 children was forgiven by the Pope. Evil priest was free to sexually abuse hundreds of children. By Jay Greenberg, July 13, 2017. Father James Porter, the evil priest who raped over 200 children, confessed his pedophilia to the Pope, who decided it best to forgive and forget it has been revealed. By ignoring his pedophile confession, the Pope left Father Porter to sexually abuse many more children that could have otherwise been spared. Spartacus says when you type in bad things about Satan on Google, you get good things talking about that God. Of course, the people who run the government, the people who are working to enslave the human race, they are Satanists at their core. 
And Mama Spike, you are correct. The media is not reporting that. And Revolutionary Warrior 548 Snazzy Cat. That's you. Trent has memes. Much love to you. Continuing. The pedophile priest was caught after a private investigator who was working with the serial rapist's victims taped a phone conversation in which Porter admitted to raping over 100 children. Ghost Who Walks says they tried to, brother, but I am smashing their band, brother. Lol, you're still getting the, your live feeds on there to the Warriors who are not on Instagram. Much love to you and thank you once again, Ghost Who Walks. Laurel says, which is why Ratzinger resigned. Yes, he was the cardinal that was in charge of investigating the pedophile ring. He was actually working to get them out before he became Pope. The church ended up settling 131 claims related to Porter, making it the largest sex abuse scandal in history until new allegations later emerged in Boston involving defrocked priest Paul Shanley. And Naughty Rajat, thank you for joining us. Although he admitted to raping all those children, prosecutors on the case believe the actual number was well over 200 victims. According to the Boston Globe, the Roman Catholic priest admitted in a 1973 letter to Pope Paul VI that he had molested youths in five states. I know in the past I used to hide behind a Roman collar thinking that it would be a shield for me, Porter wrote to the Pope in a four-page affidavit seeking absolution for his unholy deeds. And Bear River 84 and Taksak Raj, thank you for joining us as well. The New York Times reports the affidavit, which was accompanied by a 20-page statement of his troubles, is a clear indication of how widespread knowledge was inside the Roman Catholic Church about Mr. Porter's activities while he was a priest from 1960 to 1974. Pope Paul VI approved Father Porter's request on January the 5th, 1974, the Globe said. The newspaper reported that Mr. Porter's personnel file showed that the Bishop of the Fall River Diocese in Massachusetts and other church officials had removed Father Porter from his priestly duties at least eight times because he had sexually assaulted children. But each time they allowed him to resume his work after favourable reports on his treatment. There is also no evidence that the diocese or churches where Father Porter served ever sought to help any of his victims or their families, more than 100 accusers. More than 100 men and women who say they were sexually assaulted by Mr. Porter have come forward since the first disclosures. Specialists on the church say this makes the case one of the largest of its kind ever involving a priest. And Warrior of God Revolutionary Corporal 99, thank you for tuning in. Frank P Fitzpatrick, a private detective who says he was one of the victims, says that the letter to the Pope just goes to show how far the knowledge of this and the cover-up went. Mr. Fitzpatrick, who has accused Mr. Porter of raping him while he was an altar boy in North Attleboro, Massachusetts in the early 1960s, said, It's horrible that not even Rome acted. But Eugene Kennedy, a former priest and author who teaches psychology at Loyola University, of course, uh, many of you will know that Francis Loyola is the head, the founder of the Jesuits, at Loyola University in Chicago said it was totally unrealistic to expect that the Pope or the Vatican would intervene in a case like Father Porter's. The Vatican is simply too far away, Mr. Kennedy said, and its policy is to leave such matters up to the local diocese. Of course, these, putril, these putrid pedophiles protect each other. I'm going to have some fluoride-free water. Left my water bottle at jiu-jitsu training last night, so cheers to victory, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Spartacus says on YouTube pedosexual is a thing and it's a pedophilia ring on YouTube it's really f messed up 
Hard progress is no progress without humanity. It is sickening how they are looking to normalize and mainstream pedophilia. That's why we must continue to expose these sickening, satanic scumbags. It is unclear whether Father Porter's letter to Pope Paul VI is covered by the rules of confidentiality that apply to confessions within the Catholic Church. If it was covered, it would presumably have prevented church officials from notifying law enforcement officials or the victim's families. The Globe did not indicate where it had obtained the material, citing only sources. The Reverend John Moore, Director of Communications for the Fall River Diocese, which was responsible for the Father Porter while he was a priest, denied that the diocese provided the material to the Globe. Father Moore said the diocese had recently turned over all its files on the former priest to the office of the district attorney for Bristol County in New Bedford. The reason Father Porter wrote to the Pope, Mr. Kennedy and other experts said, is that only the Pope could free a priest from his vows, a process known as a dispensation. Mr. Kennedy said only two explanations were acceptable at the time, that the man had never wanted to be a priest or that he had real psychological problems. James Carroll, a former priest who is now a novelist living in Boston, said that when he sought to give up his vows in 1974, he was advised by a superior in the church that he would have to show he was a misfit with a chronic psychological problem. Mr. Carroll said he had refused, and when he wrote a letter to the Pope expressing displeasure in his priestly work, he was initially rejected. It may have been this requirement that led Father Porter to write his letter. In it, he acknowledged that he had become homosexually involved with some of the youths in the parish, according to the Globe account. Father Porter was also careful not to give details that would leave him legally liable. In much of his letter, he merely said he had lapsed into his past problems. Truly sickening. Nowhere in his letter did Father Porter express any regret for his actions, the Globe said. And these pestiferous pusillanimous pro-crustian pedophiles are just absolutely rife all the way through these religious and governmental systems and we have to bring down all these systems to save the people who can't speak for themselves. And here is the continued destruction of the human race, the continued murder of children through abortion and so many children are murdered through abortion before they even get a chance at life. From naturalnews.com UK healthcare system wants to allow the murder of living babies right up to the moment they're about to be born. July 12, 2017 by Robert Jonathan. An influential medical union trade group wants to significantly expand abortion availability in the UK, apparently to the extent of abortion on demand for any reason by abolishing criminal penalties currently on the books. And Mama Spike says the church has been protecting the pedophiles for eons. You're exactly right. That's why we have to expose all of these putrid people. Late last month, two-thirds of the 500 delegates at the British Medical Association's annual meeting approved a motion to decriminalise abortions. The group will now lobby Parliament to change the law. Once again, cheers to victory, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> the BMA, which is the largest group of its kind in the country, passed the motion despite opposition from about 1,000 plus doctors who signed a petition calling for the withdrawal of the motion. If the BMA gets its way, medics would not face criminal sanctions for providing or women for procuring an abortion in any circumstances at any stage in a pregnancy the London Telegraph explained, while adding that the organisation still recommends limiting abortion procedures under normal circumstances to the first six months of a pregnancy. Of course, I don't believe in criminal sanctions for anything imposed by the state. That's ridiculous. But what I'm against is the continued social engineering and the continued dysgenics program murdering children before they are born. 
Mama Spike says, if the child can live outside the womb, killing it is murder. You're exactly right. In 2016, UK doctors legally terminated about 200,000 pregnancies. Spartacus says, when you follow the mainstream, you become mistreated physically. That's exactly right. In general, existing law permits abortions up to 24 weeks for the health of the mother or if the child is expected to be severely disabled provided two doctors approve. According to the London Spectator, approval is routine as a practical matter, and very few medics even go through the motions of establishing that they're signing off on an abortion on this basis. Under UK law, an abortion after 24 weeks could send an expectant mother to jail for life and the physician to a sentence of five years. The UK National Health Service is a completely government-run entity. As alluded to above, the lofty rhetoric of the BMA motion includes some limitations, Breitbart News reported, but the profit motive could also loom large as it often does on this side of the Atlantic. As Natural News previously chronicled, abortion advocate Planned Parenthood in the US reportedly rewards employees who meet a certain abortion quota. Excuse me. Cheers to victory. The organization has also been allegedly revealed to be harvesting and selling fetal baby parts. While the fake news media in the US tries to simplistically push everyone into either the pro-life or pro-choice camp, most people are likely conflicted about this highly sensitive private issue. The UK citizenry likely has the same profound mixed feelings about this very complex and personal decision. Pro-life groups maintain, however, that the BMA proposal could enable abortions for sex selection or allow an abusive partner to intimidate a woman into getting an unwanted abortion. A former BMA president told the Daily Mail that aborting a baby after 24 weeks, the age of medically agreed viability, is an extreme move towards involuntary euthanasia. It is a continued push to murder as many people as possible. It is a worldwide depopulation agenda. This next article, crazy stuff. Growing sophistication of sex robots is leading to moral and legal dilemmas, expert warns. A leading academic has warned the lifelike sentient sex robots blur the line between what or who is capable of consenting to sex. Spartacus says abortion is only liberals get them because it's not a girl or they are brainwashed mentally. It is massive brainwashing, that is for sure. The rise of sex robots is presenting increasingly difficult moral and legal dilemmas, an expert has warned. Artificial, Artificial intelligence is becoming increasingly sophisticated, with sex dolls increasingly lifelike. And Mama Spike thinks this is hilarious. It is insane. <clears throat> but advancements in technology bring with them their own serious issues surrounding morals and the legal status of such sex robots. Ethics expert Professor Robin McKenzie of Kent Law School said sex, law and ethics will never be the same. Sooner than we think, technologists will create sentient, self-aware sex bots capable of emotional and sexual intimacy. Under existing legal and ethical standards, sex between consenting adult humans is permissible, as is sex between humans and things. Mama Spike says, who wants a sex bot? Not me. Not me either. Continuing. (coughs) 
and this is disgusting, weird stuff, but I've got to continue. Humans having sex with other humans who are unable to consent to sex, like children and adults lacking decision-making capacity, is seen as unlawful and unethical. So is human-animal sex. Such groups are recognized as sentient beings who cannot consent to sex with interests in need of protection. Sentient, self-aware sex bots create, created to engage in emotional and sexual intimacy with humans disrupts this tidy model. I don't know how tidy it is. Well, that model actually is pretty tidy. Mama Spike says it takes all the fun out of it. You're exactly right. They are not humans, though they will look like us, feel like us to touch, and act as our intimate and sexual partners. While they will be manufactured, potentially from biological components, their sentience, self-awareness, and capacity for relationships with humans mean that they cannot simply be categorized as things or animals. Spartacus says, I don't want sex with a brain-dead person. Where's the love these days? Where is the love? Not with the sex robots, that's for sure. And Mama Spike says they're also making children dolls. Yeah, that is truly disgusting. Ethicists, lawmakers, and manufacturers treat robots as things, but future sex bots are more than things. Robotic animated sex dolls able to simulate human appearance assume sexual positions and mimic human conversation and emotions are on sale now. These are things neither sentient nor self-aware, incapable of relationships or intimacy, as described in the Foundation for Responsible Robotics report just released. Proposals to the European Parliament passed in February 2017 to recognise intelligent robots as legal electronic persons focus on robots only as things, tools or devices. They seek merely to ensure that companies owning robots are liable for damage caused and that robots are programmed to avoid harming humans. And Javi CR86, thank you for joining us. <clears throat> And Mama Spike saying, Joe, your face, LMAO. This is uh, just absolute madness, the world we are living in. The truth is stranger than fiction. Professor McKenzie is an expert on ethical and medical aspects of neuroscience. And as a member of the EU-funded FET flagship initiative, Robot Companions for Citizens, Ethics and Society Working Group, is investigating the ethical and legal implications of the creation of sentient robots as companions for citizens, particularly, particularly as the European population ages. She said, where does this leave future sex bots? In order for intimacy to be achieved, degrees of sentience, subjectivity and autonomy must be built in design features. This implies a central aspect of legal personhood, the capacity to decide whether to consent to or refuse sex, and to have that decision upheld by law. Yet, full legal personhood ent entails further, far-reaching civic responsibilities and rights. Should we extend to these sex bots, including the right to marry? I guarantee you, if they make it legal to marry a robot, and they probably will, they're probably going to make it legal to marry these robots. You're going to have people lined up around the corner from the registry, from the chapel, and they're going to be lining up to marry their robots. <sighs> really? Wow. I know how you feel, because we're on the same wavelength, right? Just almost every single aspect of the world that we live in is designed to be just so insane, flipping reality on its head. And those of us who can see the truth, it's designed to make us feel, you know, freaked out and depressed. But we got to stay strong and we got to smile through it all and we have to use positive action and peaceful action to bring this evil system down. 
Or should we accept that we will engage in unethical, exploitative, sexual and emotional intimacies with subordinate, sentient beings created and sold for that purpose, however close to sexual slavery or bestiality this may be? Bear River says, send some of these bots to those six six scumbags in the Catholic Church. Ah, oh, man. Future sentient, self-aware sex bots thus raise profound ethical and legal issues. These must be resolved urgently before they appear. And if you're some kind of freak who wants to get it on with a robot, if you can't get any human action, man, that's so pathetic. That's so sad, but there are so many of these individuals all over the world who have these robots already, I'm sure, and so many more are going to get them. It's because they are concerned more just about getting off, more about their physical and carnal needs, instead of going beyond, instead of raising their consciousness to see what is going on in the world around us and truly take the courage to do something to stop this evil system from enslaving the human race. That's what we're doing right here, right now. We are bringing this evil system down. And our next article from ZeroHedge.com. Visa begins bribing merchants to stop taking cash. By Tyler Durden, July 13, 2017. Authored by Eve Smith, via Naked Capitalism blog. Warrior of God said people are nasty. Many of them are, but we are not. We are revolutionary warriors. We are here to save the world. Spartacus said it's gatekeeping. Joe, ideas are cages for the mind. I agree with you, brother. Spartacus says if it doesn't talk back and is in the kitchen, I'm happy. (laughs) I missed a whole bunch of these comments. Spartacus says, all this going on, Islam was meant to take over the Jesuits' greatest plan. Yes, they created Islam. They created all these religions to have uh, control over both sides of the war. It is Hegelian dialectic problem, reaction, solution, 101. Mama Spike said, if he can mow the grass, take out the trash and fix my car, I might try him. I'll tell you what, they're going to have these uh, handyman robots as well. But I'll tell you what, man is greater than machine. <laughs> Warrior of God said people are nasty. She said correct. Ghost who walks says H2O brother, yes. I'm going to have some fluoride free water. Thank you all for your support every single day. You may see I'm sporting the brand new Save the World Army t-shirt. If you want to get one of these, we also have hoodies and singlets and ladies t-shirts and mugs and a whole bunch of stuff check out the save the world army threadless.com thank you all so much for your support i'll pin this comment cheers the war on cash is escalating a big driver isn't central banks who want to be able to inflict negative interest rates on savers, or treasuries who see cash transactions as hiding revenues from their tax collectors, but the payment networks that want to kill cash and checks as competitors to their oh-so-terrific and fee-gouging credit and debit cards. Goes to walk, says, I'm going to go rip a couple for you, my brother. Fire in the hole. Nice one, my brother. Enjoy. Warrior of God said, yellow. Woo! I'm glad you like it. However, one bit of good news is there doesn't appear to be much enthusiasm on the buyer, as in merchant end. Ghost Who Walks says, Gotta have Kaya now. Gotta have Kaya now. First, the overview from the Wall Street Journal. Visa Inc. has a new offer for small merchants. Take thousands of dollars from the card giant to upgrade their payment technology. In return, the businesses must stop accepting cash. This is the push towards the cashless society. This is the push towards the mark of the beast RFID chip RFID chip for everybody. 
easy skanking, skanking it slow, my brother. The company unveiled the initiative on Wednesday as a part of a broader offer to steer Americans away from using old-fashioned paper money. Visa is saying Visa says it is planning to give ten thousand dollars a piece to up to fifty restaurants and food vendors to pay for their technology and marketing costs, as long as the businesses pledge to start what Visa executive Jack Forstel calls a journey to cashless. There are good reasons to think this initiative won't get far. Customer resistance. Food vendors, and in particular restaurants, are low-margin businesses with fickle customers with little to no loyalty. Why risk driving business away? Aside from the fact that some customers prefer cash, a related issue is that using cards and smartphones often seem to be a tax on time. I really hate using chip cards. Mag cards were often faster than cash, but since you swiped and could stuff the card back in your wallet while the transaction was being approved. Chip cards, by contrast, require you to keep the card in the machine while it is being approved, so one is very much aware of the weight. And when I've seen it, when I've seen people using phones, often to buy small stuff like coffee, which really amazes me, I find that they, get, they are slower with it than they probably would be with cash, in that they seem to have to fumble with the phone to get the right app ready, and then the payment does always go right through either. And that's before you get to the fact that Apple Pay and other smartphone payment timestamp exactly when you paid, adding this information to the surveillance state that the surveillance state is gathering about you. By contrast, even if you use a credit card at a store, Clive informs us that the credit card network typically retains only the date of the transaction. Higher merchant charges. I take credit and debit cards through PayPal and also checks. And even though I am often slow to deposit checks because I find it hard to get to the bank, I'd still rather have checks despite the somewhat greater hassle because I save the 3% cut the card networks take. Visa makes the argument that handling cash has costs too, but they are the ones that have ginned up the numbers and in my case, they don't wash. As the journal points out, indeed, Many merchants prefer cash because they don't have to share the revenue with credit card companies. Credit card interchange fees, which networks like Visa set and that merchants pay to the banks that issue their cards, are on average around 2% of the transaction amount, according to the National Retail Federation, the largest trade group that represents merchants in the US. The idea that merchants don't want to accept cash is a myth, said Mallory Duncan, a senior vice president and general counsel at the National Retail Federation. Negative impact on employees who get tips. As one of my tax attorney buddies dryly remarks, some people have this odd idea that cash payments aren't taxable. Restaurant workers who have tips as the major source of their income almost assuredly prefer getting them in cash rather than facing the delay of having their employer receive them through the payment network, which creates delay, as well as the not trivial odds that the boss might cheat them either informally or declare that he's entitled to a processing cut. And that's before getting to the fact that restaurant pay levels probably presuppose a fair bit of tax evasion, so the business owner might risk losing his better employees to competitors who hadn't gone the no-cash route. And Warrior of God posted the GoFundMe to bring me to the United States. Thank you for that, Warrior of God. Going to have some more of this water here. Cheers to victory. <clears throat> Enforcement. How is Visa going to police establishments that say they aren't going to take cash? Will Visa have spies? Will Visa have audit rights? Risk of legal challenge. As a surprisingly large number of Wall Street Journal readers pointed out, cash is a legally sanctioned means of payment. For instance, Richard Tavis said, Merchants who will no longer accept cash won't get my business, period. Call me a Luddite, and I'm a bit of a Luddite too. A Luddite is someone who doesn't really appreciate technology, named after followers of some guy named Ludd back in the day who smashed up all these types of machines because they uh, didn't like the technology. Ghost Who Walks says, 
they're already doing this every time you Google search or internet search, brother, so they can form profiles on everything we search or buy online, brother. Exactly. And they are building massive psychological profiles on everybody. Exactly right. Goes to walks, says, we need a dance party in Seattle. Dang it. Me too. That would be sweet. And goes through walks, says, cheers, brother. Fire in the hole. Much love to you. And Richard Tosha said, that's my take as well. And as someone else mentioned, what happens if you refuse to pay with a visa or don't have one after having completed the meal? Will they take cash then or is the meal free? So I'd be surprised if Visa had a legal leg to stand on when trying to make these deals. Mama Spike said, isn't there somewhere in the Bible that says the end times there will be a cashless society? Yes, it said that there will be a system in the end when all men, rich and poor, free and slave, will have to have a mark either in their head or in their right hand to buy or sell. And that's the RFID chip that they are pushing through this cashless society. <clears throat> the Treasury does support the position that private businesses can refuse to take cash as payment for goods and services as opposed to settlement of debts. However, as writers following <clears throat> David Graeber's debt, the first 5,000 years, like to point out, we incur and settle debts all the time. And a bar tab or restaurant bill is a debt. The vendor provides the service without being paid, then expects you to settle the debt you incurred. And Biteable Beauty and Elemental Joe, thank you for joining us on this revolutionary broadcast Ghost Who Walks says, no, just take what you want. Thus, the market segment Visa is targeting for this move would seem to be one where Visa is on a particularly weak legal footing. I can easily see someone with a penchant for mixing things up, go to a restaurant, either not have a card or bring a card he knows will be declined, just to look like he didn't intend to stage a stunt, and then video putting down more than enough cash to settle the bill and leave. The merchant will have no legal out. He's been paid. And at least in any decent-sized city, no way will the cops intervene. They'll regard this as a private dispute not worth their time. If the restaurant staff try to restrain the exiting customer, they could wind up with a very costly suit on their hands. Taking cash may be the real point of the merchant. A savvy New York City colleague regularly points out how many New York City businesses like pizzerias and cheap jewellery stores that never seem busy or nail salons that have, econ that have economics that don't seem to make sense are probably partly, if not mainly, in the money laundering business. Visa has even bigger ambitions. Visa is trying to turn those numbers more in its favour. In the US, it is going after spending categories such as parking and rent that have been entrenched in cash and check payments for decades. Abroad, it is partnering with governments to move more payments onto its network, including an agreement that it recently signed with the Polish government to move the country to a cashless system. Ghost Who Walks says, I will go with a friend who has a card and bring myself a sandwich in my pocket. They want to control food. They want to control water. They want to control the air. They're doing that already. They want to control every single transaction all over the world. And by doing that, they control every single person. They want no escape from their system. That's why we must smash their system before it's too late. Using peaceful means, of course. Our next article. From naturalnews.com. Two deaths and 23 cases of cancer in the UK linked to controversial textured breast implants. July 12, 2017 by Francis Bloomfield. And this is straight up how people are being prepared for the RFID microchip. If people are willing to get themselves cut up to go under the knife and have all this expensive surgery just to look better, just to have a better looking physique in their eyes, then of course people are going to be willing to get these microchips so you can access Facebook straight through your brain or whatever else they're going to offer. Since the year began, two women in the UK have died from cancer after receiving breast implants, revealed the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA. The organization has reported another 23 cases of women who've developed the same time of cancer. 
anaplastic large cell lymphoma. And you can't spell anaplastic without plastic. The disease is a rare type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, or NHL, that affects the lymph nodes of the immune system. The symptoms of ALCL include fever, painless swelling of the lymph nodes, and back pain. It's believed that these instances of ALCL can be attributed to textured breast implants, specifically to the inflammation caused by their rough textures, reported in the dailymail.co.uk. This inflammation would then cause the body's immune system to weaken and develop the disease over the course of several years. One other theory states that bacteria on the surface of the implant could progress into a lymphoma after some time. According to the MHRA, these figures should be no cause for alarm. It's all good. Keep getting your breast implants. Don't worry about the cancer. Don't worry about the people dying. You want people to look at you, don't you? You want the guys to be all over you on the D floor. You just want some attention, right? No. Look beyond materialism. Look beyond aesthetics. There are more important things in the world than how we look. So many more important things, like standing up against this evil system. These figures should be no cause for alarm since there has yet to be a definitive link between the cancers and the implants. And Kyle Animal Phillips, thank you for tuning in. And Warrior of God said, boo. A report does not necessarily mean that the events described were caused by the implant. The number of reports received, therefore, is not a summary of known or proven adverse reactions to the implant. In the UK, there is currently no definitive evidence of an association with ALCL or any specific make or model of breast implant, said a spokesperson for the organization. Worry of God says whatever. Experts, however, disagree and have called for the UK to issue a warning against textured breast implants. Jim Frame, cosmetic surgery professor at Anglia Ruskin University, remarked, this cancer is a potential bombshell that has, swept, that has been swept under the carpet for five years. Textured implants should be banned. We should return to using smooth ones, which were safe. In the US, similarly grim figures were released by the US FDA. As of March 23, 2017, the FDA received 359 reports of ALCL cases associated with breast implants, including nine deaths. Of the 359 cases, 231 came with information on the textures of the breast implants. 203 were reported to be textured breast implants, while only 28 were smooth breast implants. The FDA then concluded that women who received textured breast implants were at a higher risk of developing ALCL over women with smooth breast implants. And Worry of God says it doesn't take an Einstein to realize that putting a foreign substance in your natural body is bad. And Spartacus says, so is bestiality coming anytime soon because people are that messed up. Yeah, they are pushing it, bro. They're pushing it in all these cartoons. It is insane. Right here in Australia, 46 cases of ALCL, including three deaths, have been reported thus far by the Australian Therapeutic Goods Administration, or TGA, the regulatory body stated that the chances of developing ALCL were between 1 in 1,000 and 1 in 10,000 women with breast implants. Textured breast implants were created in the 1980s to prevent implants from moving around in the surgeon-created breast pocket. Due to their slight roughness, the implants would stay firmly in place and minimize the likelihood of the breasts becoming irregularly shaped and the development of capsular contracture or the growth of hard and uncomfortable scar tissue around the implants. Unlike smooth breast implants, textured breast implants are available with a shape 
and are therefore the implant of choice for women who are undergoing reconstruction post mastectomy. Warrior of God says boobs for boobs. However, textured breast implants come with their own set of complications compared to smooth breast implants. Textured ones were more likely to ripple and leak. Smooth implants are also cheaper and last longer than textured breast implants. It is insane. Warrior of God said, great, porous too. And Mama Spike said, I can see joint replacements, but not necessarily for beauty. That's feeding your ego. And that's what they want. They want people totally serving their egos. From the antimedia.org, Australian special forces killed Afghan children, tried to cover it up. Bear with me as this article loads. Thank you all so much for your support. I'm going to have some of this fluoride-free water right here. Cheers to your health and cheers to victory. Killings reflected shifting priorities and tactics in the Afghan war by Jason Ditz, July 12, 2017. Spartacus said, boobs, the plastic ones, are made from trees and there is not enough forests on planet Earth. Mama Spike said, how do you men feel about boob implants? Don't they feel fake? Yes, in my experience, they do feel uh, fake. They feel very uh, hard like oranges. That's how I would describe... That's how I would describe them. Anyway, moving on, Warrior of God says, hey, vanity goes with all of that other superficial crap. You're exactly right. Adding to evidence of the humanitarian nightmare the Afghan war has become, Australia is now investigating soldiers from their special forces related to evidence that at least twice in raids in Kandahar province, those troops killed children in rural areas, then tried to cover up their deaths. And Ghost Who Walks says, be happy with who you are. That's great advice. And Revolutionary Sergeant Sham Anarchist leading the Green Squad out of Costa Rica. Thank you for tuning in. He posted a link. And bro, I don't like that Russell Brand guy, man. I bought his book, Revolution. He's a straight up communist, socialist, false prophet. He is a straight up scumbag. Mama Spike said, lol. <laughs> uh, Spartacus said to get fake you have to become fake like like the money in fake girls and Spartacus uh, Ghost Who Walk said if not hard work to look as good as you can yes fake plastic people he says Warrior of God says yes me either cover it up might be overstating it really Indeed, the evidence suggests that the Australian forces who were present at the killings just plain never reported them up the chain of command and it was only because local villagers found the bodies that those deaths became public knowledge. This comes as Australia's Inspector General is already investigating the special forces over other unlawful killings and that those special forces were killing so many civilians they routinely carried spare drop weapons with them just to plant on the corpses to make it look like they were combatants. Truly disgusting. Warrior of God said he bugs me. Shamanica said I just figured out how to find the notifications with the drop off screen. Ghost who walks says read some Bruce Lee philosophy and motivation. Yeah, you don't need to keep posting that link, Shamanicist. I don't like that Russell Brand guy. And Spartacus said, Russell Brand is a transgender female pedo. I haven't looked into that, but he is a socialist, false revolutionary. <laughs> Warrior of God said, you can touch me peaches, but please don't squeeze me plums. Anyway, moving on. 
the investigations serve as just another embarrassment from the perspective of Australia's military, but also appears to be the result of broad changes in the priorities and tactics of the US and its coalition allies in fighting in Afghanistan as they moved away from the clear and hold tactics of the war's first decade. And Spartacus, uh, Warrior of God said, you, uh, sorry, Shamanicus said, don't knock it till you listen to it. I'm not going to listen to it. I, like I said, I already read the guy's book and he's a socialist. That's all there is to say about it. He's looking to increase government power. What he said in one of his uh, interviews with Jeremy Corbyn, he wants a massive redistribution of wealth to be carried out by the state. And that's not what I want. I don't want any communist government. I don't want any socialist government. I don't want any government. I want people to be free. And Warrior of God said, lol, it's a movie reference. I haven't seen that particular movie. Those familiar with the situation say that once clear and hold was abandoned, the collateral damage of raids stopped being a major concern for how the troops, since they weren't going to be there after the operation anyhow, and that often helicopter-based raids became land, kill and leave. This attitude was plainly in evidence when the Australian forces engaged in the raids in question, heading into rural Kandahar in the middle of the night and shooting anything that moved, even if they weren't in a combat situation yet. If the slain turned out to be children, the expectation was that this could simply be swept under the rug. It is this same attitude that has other nations involved in the operation facing a similar question, from New Zealand's probes into revenge raids to US special forces desecrating the bodies of slain enemies. It's also the latest in a long list of reasons why they aren't welcomed as liberators and aren't anywhere near winning the war. Of course, that war is never meant to be won. The war is meant to continue perpetually. But I will not allow this war to continue perpetually. I'm here doing my best every single day to unite people and to bring down this disgusting, decrepit, diabolical, demonic system. And together, we are doing it. Spartacus said, lol, Bruce Lee is a idea of gatekeeping transgender female bro he's a tranny looking at science body structure lol you know i saw that video saying bruce lee's a tranny it made some good points man i'm not sure if i'm 100 percent convinced but it made some uh good points warrior of god said wow i'll tell you what the rabbit hole is incredibly deep and we all know this but there are only uh two mistakes that you can make on the road to truth Number one is not getting started. Number two is not going all the way. And I'm here to do my best to spread the truth and to encourage you to do your own research as well and to do whatever you can to help other people with the spirit of love because it is the power of peace that will prevail. It is the power of truth that will triumph and it is the power of love that will lead us to victory. Thank you all so much for all of your support. This video will remain on Instagram for the next 24 hours. Thank you for following me on Instagram if you don't already. Also, it'll be on YouTube at youtube.com slash C slash the Save the World Army. Also, thank you for following us on Twitter at twitter.com slash Save World Army. And if you want to get your Save the World Army gear, you can go to the Save the World Army .threadless.com. Warrior of God said no. Shamanicist said, I don't care much for brand either, but I was impressed by Varufa. Warrior of God said, thank you, Joseph. Good night, all. Spartacus said, I think Earth is a demon controlling souls, so we're in that loop of reincarnated. And that sentence doesn't finish. And Shamanicus said, Varufakis views. Once again, we don't agree on everything but we agree that there is an evil system that's enslaving humanity and we agree that it's up to us to bring them down thank you so much for your support i'll be back on monday i am revolutionary warrior number one the general of the save the world army smoking joe McHale, and together we are beating the illuminati breaking the new world order bringing down the world government and saving the world from evil much love to all of you the revolution is here and we will be victorious Woo! Yeah.